Han Song from Korea University, and he'll be talking about automatic and scalable detection of logical errors in functional programming assignments. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to my presentation. I'm Do Han Song from Korea University. In this talk, I present our research, automatic and scalable detection of logical errors in functional programming assignments. This work is co-worked with Myung Ho Lee and Hak Joo. The motivation of this work came from our teaching experience. In our functional programming course, we receive a lot of assignment submission from students. And to check their correctness, we used a set of test cases which are manually designed. However, we found that making good test cases which can correctly grade the submission is very challenging. To show my motivation more clearly, I brought a motivating example. This example is to write an OCaml program that differentiates the given arithmetic expression with respect to the given variable. For example, when you differentiate the arithmetic expression x squared plus 1 with respect to the x, we can obtain 2 times x. In the code level, an arithmetic expression can be defined as the following data type. It can be a constant, variable, power, addition, and multiplication. Then, the goal of this problem is to define a function diff which takes a pair of an arithmetic expression and a string and produces a differentiated expression. We can represent the arithmetic expression x squared plus 1 to this data type and the dx to a string x. Then, given this pair as an input, the diff function produces an output 2 times x. This is the solution program of this problem. As you can see, the implementation basically follows the definition of differentiation. For example, when it takes constant values, it returns constant zero. For the inductive cases of sum and times, it recursively differentiates all the elements. As I said, we use task cases for grading. And these are the task cases we use for this problem. All of them are carefully designed to cover various behavior. For example, each of them contains various expressions such as power, sum, or times. And moreover, for better grading, we have continually find them over the last three years. However, these well tuned task cases often fail to detect some error. This is the example. It's one of the submissions we receive from student. <clears throat> As the student is not familiar with programming, she'll write a very complicated and syntactically different code to the solution. This program passed all the test cases in the previous slide and got the full credit. However, we found that it has a very tricky error, which is hard to detect. To detect the error, we need this simple input, 1 times x. When the correct implementation takes this, the expected output is constant 1. However, with this input, the submission returns constant 0, and it's absolutely incorrect. To find such an error triggering input manually, we should conduct the following two tasks. First, we should find the cause of the error. Second, after finding the error location, we must think of a possible error triggering input. As you know, even for one program, these two tasks require lots of effort and very challenging as well. The more serious problem is that in real classroom, there are numerous submissions we should check. And we experience that our, our students are too creative so they sometimes generate a very syntactically different code and very hard to understand and very complicated code. So it's practically impossible to write good task cases for each submission manually. To resolve this problem, some prior works have been proposed. To test functional program, property-based testing is widely used. This technique is very effective but still has a limitation. It's semi-automatic as it requires human effort. To use it properly, a user must design a test generator and test shrinker manually, and the testing performance heavily depends on them. The code on the right shows the generator and shrinker we used for this problem, and designing them was not so easy. Unlike the property-based testing, our technique is fully automatic. It does not require any human effort. It takes a buggy program and a reference program only and produces an error trigger input. From now on, I, such, I say such an input as a counterexample. So our goal is to find the counterexample of each submission without any human effort. 
And to achieve this goal, we propose a novel technique which combines enumerative search and symbolic execution in a synergistic way. Now I want to explain it in more detail with a learning example. This example is to write a function map which applies the given function to each element of an integer list. And there are two implementations. The above one is the correct program, and the below one is buggy because it applies the given function to positive elements only. And our goal is to find this counterexample. For this, we should be able to make a function type input and a list containing non-positive integer. Our technique combines these two baseline approaches, enumerative search and symbolic execution. So before explaining our approach, I will explain each of them. First is the enumerative search. It enumerates all possible test cases until it finds a counterexample. Let's consider that we want to make a function for the first argument f. Well, then what we want to do is to complete the body denoted as a whole with other expressions. For example, we can replace the whole by a variable or other binary operations. And in this way, we can easily generate task cases even for non-primitive values like functions or constructors. However, this technique has a limitation. When we complete the whole with constant values, an infinite number of constants can be used. And enumerating all of them is extremely efficient to find specific error triggering values. In this example, we can consider infinitely many candidates at the single step of enumeration. Another approach is symbolic execution. It can generate the counterexample by comparing program's behavior. Let's assume that we are given two symbols, alpha f and alpha list, for the two arguments. When the alpha list is empty, the outputs of two programs, IC and IB, are empty lists. Since they are the same, it's not an error state. When the alpha list has one element alpha head, there are two cases. Alpha head is greater than zero or not. If the alpha head is greater than zero, the IC and IB are the same, so it's not an error. If not, the resulting values are different, so it's an error state. Then, by tracking the past condition to the error state, we can easily conclude that the value of alpha head must be less than or equal to zero to be a counting example. So in this way, using symbol execution, we can easily infer some specific values which trigger the error. However, it also has a limitation. The problem is that deducing non primitive values symbolically is very challenging and sometimes impossible. In this example, to generate a function, a solver must be solve a symbolic function alpha f. As I explained, the enumerative search and symbolic execution have their own pros and cons. The enumerative search is relatively easy to generate non-primitive values like functions or constructor. However, it's very ineffective to find specific primitive values which trigger the error. On the other hand, the symbolic execution easily infers some specific values, but it's very hard to apply to non-primitive ones. So our key idea is to combine both approaches in a synergistic way to overcome the key limitations of each other and enjoy the benefits of both. These slides illustrate our approach. Given a reference program and the buggy program only, it generates a counterexample of the buggy program. Our technique consists of two parts, generator and verifier. The generator makes a symbolic task case, and the verifier checks whether the symbolic task case can be a counterexample. If not, the generator produces a new one. Our technique repeats this procedure until it finds a counterexample. Now I will explain each of them. The first step is symbolic task case generation. In this step, the generator makes a symbolic task case by representing the primitive values as symbols. In more detail, it abstracts an infinite number of primitive values at the same position to one symbol. In this example, we can replace the integer in the function body by one symbol alpha. Then in this way, we can significantly reduce the search space. Then how can you know that if the symbolic test case can be a counterexample? The verifier takes the law. <coughs> it checks whether the symbolic task case can be a counterexample. Let's assume that we are the generator produces x plus alpha 1 and a list with alpha 2 for the two arguments. 
Then the verifier first runs the two programs with these symbolic task cases, and it computes a set of all possible symbolic outputs and their corresponding paths. For example, after learning the correct program, we can get the following ledger, pi c. The path condition true means no symbols involved in the path, and the symbolic output means the ledger is a list with alpha 2 plus alpha 1. In the buggy program, there are two cases. When the alpha 2 is greater than 0, we can get this ledger as it applies the function to the element. Otherwise, <coughs> it doesn't apply the function. So after learning the buggy program, we can get this ledger, pi b. Then using these two ledgers, the verifier constructs a verification condition and solves it. When the small pi c and pi b means the pass condition of two programs, and the vc, vb are their corresponding outputs, the verification condition is defined like this. Intuitively, it indicates that the submission is correct if we can cover all behaviors of the solution. In this example, we can get this ledger. Then the verifier proves its validity. When the alpha 1 is 1 and alpha 2 is 0, the verification condition is false. Finally, by substituting each symbol in the symbolic test case with the resulting values, we can obtain this concrete counterexample. Now, I will show our evaluation ledger. We implemented our approach in a tool test panel, and we collected about 4,000 submissions from 10 problems. Through the evaluation, we want to answer the following research questions. Effectiveness in error detection, comparison with the property-based testing, and usefulness in automatic program repair. In our experiments, the time, li time limit for generating one count example was set to one minute. This table shows the effectiveness of our technique compared to the manual test cases. We use 10 input output examples for each problem as the manual test cases, and they have been continually fined over the last three years for better grading. Each column shows the number of error programs detected in various settings. For example, the second column shows the number of error programs detected by our technique, but not by, by the manual test cases. You can see that test time have found 88 more error programs than the manual test cases. We compared our technique to a property-based testing tool, QCheck. It's an OCaml version of QCheck. To use QCheck properly, we carefully designed the test generators and test shrinker for each problem. And the columns QCheck and TestML show the performance of each tool respectively. The ledger show that TestML found more error than the QCheck in the last time. Finally, I'll show a promising application of our technique. It can be used to solve the test case of repeating problem in automatic program repair. We found that our prior work FixML, a feedback generation system for functional program assignments, also has the same problem. It sometimes generates overfit patches, which satisfy only the given task cases, but still have errors. To resolve this problem, we attach our technique to FixML. This system verifies the generated patch by finding their contact examples and try to repeat again. And try to repeat eh, again. <laughs> This system repeats this process until no counterexamples are found. As I explained, we attach our technique to FixML and evaluate its usefulness. The results show that our technique significantly reduced the number of overfit patches and eventually increased the patch rate. You can see that one overfit patch still remains. However, this is not a fundamental limitation of our technique but this is because of the performance of the server we used. When we give more time budget to the server, we found that no overfit patches remains. So this is the end of my talk. In this work, we propose a novel technique for detecting logical errors in functional programming assignments, and we implemented our tool TestML. Our key idea is to combine enumerative search and symbolic execution in a synergistic way. And the evaluation ledger show that our technique is very effective in both error detection and automatic program repair. Finally, our tool and benchmarks are publicly available, so you can freely use them. Thank you for listening to my talk. Thank you.
Great, we have time for questions. One at the front here. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm Asha Veta Gabrielin from ETH Zurich. Uh, I was wondering, since you use um, symbolic execution to help your testing approach, wouldn't it be possible to take another step uh, in that direction and just formally specify and verify the programs uh, against certain properties that you care about? Sorry? Would it be possible to use, like there are symbolic execution uh, verification engines, right? So could, could you just go one step beyond what you're already doing and, and just formally verify these properties instead of generating test cases? Uh, I think your question is that with symbolic execution, uh, we perform symbolic execution directly to the programs. Uh, uh, mm, um, Okay, the symbolic execution can be used to, uh, can be directly used to the programs, but in functional program, there are some features which is how to make the symbolic execution burdensome, like pattern matching or high order function. So this, this kind of features makes the symbolic execution burdensome, so we do not use the symbolic execution directly. Okay, thanks. Question here. Uh, thanks for the talk. I like this work actually very much, but uh, I have some comments. So the first one is that actually property-based testing is indeed a semi-manual semi technique, but for a different reason actually than the one you, you explain. You have to write the property. So property-based testing yeah. is indeed a semi, it's not a completely automatic technique because you have to write the property, not because you have to write the generators and shrinkers. There are tools yeah. and techniques that give you automatically a generator and a shrinker and actually quite effective ones. Yeah, as you said, property-based testing is very effective. but we... I didn't say it's very effective. I said it's only, it's semi-automatic for a different reason than the one you mentioned. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Property-based testing yeah. is indeed semi-automatic, as you say, yeah. but for a different reason than you claim, not for because you have to write the generators and shrinkers. There are techniques that give you automatically a generator and a shrinker given the type of the type, the data type that you have. So okay. that's a comment, okay? The second thing is that even your technique is not fully automatic, if I understand it correctly, because you have to have a correct program in the first place, oh, yeah. which you use as an oracle. Um, okay. I think that the technological error using property-based testing, the correct program was also need because you need the, the correct program, but then the property is trivial that for every input, my the solution of the student gives the same value as yeah. the one that yeah. the oracle gives. So it's exactly equally. Man, that's more difficult actually than to write the property, to write the correct program and be sure that you are correct. Mm, actually, I think that to, using to use pro property-based testing for detecting logical errors. I think the correct program also needs. Yes, you do yeah. need it, but that's mo that's the difficult part. You say that writing correct program is difficult than write a task Yes, error your students have proved that. I think I'm going to suggest that you take this offline. There might be some misunderstanding <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, okay. So let's thank our speaker again. Thanks, okay. thanks for the work. Okay, our final speaker of this.